All right, it's Matt Rosick, and this is Work in Progress, I think number eight. I just uploaded two more parts of the Work in Progress of this uh, last night. Had a bunch of re stuff recorded and hadn't uploaded in a while. So this is number eight, and we are finally to the point where we can do panel lining. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you just on one piece here. This is after I sprayed the gloss yesterday. And look how shiny that is. Ooh, it laid down really, really nice. As usual, there's some dust here and there. There's no way to avoid it, um, but that's what flat coat is for. It'll hide all that <laughs> dust. <laughs> so it actually came out pretty clean. This is actually one of the cleaner clear coat jobs considering my spray area. Um, you know, I don't have a, a hermetically sealed spray booth. It's a walk-in closet that I converted. So, okay, so two methods. It's been a while since I've done actually a, a, in a, an enamel wash. Um, I'm going to do enamel wash and I'm, and I'm going to use India ink pens. So for the panel lines, which I rescribed and they're really nice and deep, they're actually pretty dark right now just because they're so deep that red paint wouldn't, couldn't get down there too much, which is perfect. But we're going to really bring them out and make them black. So I'm going to use a panel line wash in the, um, in the panel lines and then anything that's like a raised de a detail like this um, I will use an Indian ink pen because it's just easier and it's water based and it's easy to clean up so I like to use uh, for enamel panel lines <coughs> excuse me I think I'm getting a cold which is not good I like to use just the plain old school testers flat black uh, this stuff is expensive now. When I used, I used to buy this, it was like a buck a jar. This is like now three fifty for this little jar. So I bought two of them because I haven't been able to get in a long time. I like to use uh, Tester's uh, Flat Black Enamel. Uh, I tried the Tamiya panel line wash and the premix stuff, but it's not dark enough. And I was finding that I'd have to go do my panel lines like two or three times to get it dark, like black. So I just, I basically threw that away. And I just went back to the testers flat black enamel and I use lighter fluid I don't use an enamel uh, thinner I find I, I find that this is a little less aggressive uh, on your paint even though this is a, a lacquer there should be no interaction but it is still a solvent based material so if you're a little too aggressive with your enamel thinner you might go through the paint uh, which I've done in the past so I, I tend to like to use a uh, zippo lighter fluid for that so uh, and also for the q-tips I like to use the more expensive hobby q-tips because they're tightly really tightly wound cotton and they don't shed unlike your normal cotton swab which is really fluffy and what happens is that like this normal cotton swab here when you go to clean up your panel lines a lot of times this cotton will get down in the panel line and pull the the ink out of the line so I like to stick with just the hobby q-tips they are more expensive like this is like six bucks for 50 q-tips but and i'm probably gonna find you know it's been a while since i bought these when i was doing gundams i was buying these like in hundreds at a time um because i was using them a lot um but not so much anymore with the figures okay so for the panel lines i'm going to do the enamel wash first on this i'm going to do it on one piece <laughs> excuse me <coughs> and then um and then I'll just be all day putting panel lines and panel lines in. Because once I'm done with this part, by the time I'm done doing all the other parts, I can come back and clean this up. And I'll show you how to clean up. It's pretty simple. So mixing wise, you want this, you want it runny. So it'll flow. So let's put this to the side. I'm just going to mix up a little bit of time. I'm working on a towel here so I don't scratch my beautiful paint. And I've been working so hard <laughs> to, to get done. Oh my gosh. So I was talking to my client last night. This is taking longer than I anticipated. Just, I forgot how much work these things are. Just hundreds of hours. All right, so thinning wise, I like to make it probably a little thicker than you normally would just because I want to make sure that my lines are really, really black. But you want it to flow too, so I just there's no thinning ratio, just kind of mix it till I think it's gonna flow and leave my line black. 
So that looks pretty good. You don't want to smoke while you're doing this. You'll blow yourself up <laughs> using the uh, uh, enamel thinner. Okay, so just thin it till it, and if I need to thin it more, I will. If I need to thicken it up a little bit more, I will. Uh, I don't need Q-tips yet because you don't want to use those until this is dry. You need to get yourself a brush. Uh, this brush will be fine. No. I need to go to Hobby Lobby when they have their brush sale and buy brushes because these are all tore up. Let me see if I got any here that I can use in my backup stash. There we go. One of these will work. I like to use the new button. Okay, here we go. So just use one of these. All right. So it's pretty simple. Load up your brush with the th with the with the wash. And if we've done our job right with the uh, panel lines, just touch it, and it should run in there. And I do it in several spots. These are pretty deep, so it's gonna take a lot of. And that just wicked. <laughs> the clear coat lets it wick around all the lines and stuff. And like, I use flat black because it dries faster and it's not nearly as sticky as like a gloss black wood and it just it tends to flow a bit better I think so I'm just touching it in all the different corners and you'll see it it'll flow and if it stops flowing again these are pretty these are really deep remember we spent I spent a lot of time uh rescribing these and it's for this this step in particular except with all those layers of paint and clear coat if I hadn't rescribed them, the, the lines would be so shallow, I wouldn't be able to do this. So this this actually goes pretty quick. I think I can get the panel lines done today. Um, and I got dry transfers. Now I, I will not, um, reseal this um, to do the dry transfers. I'm just gonna, cause I don't need to. This has a really good coat of gloss on there. Okay. So now like these areas, like these areas, see that's already drying. You can see it's starting to turn, I don't know if you can see it there, but I can see it here, it's starting to turn uh, flat. In the areas that I touched. And now you don't want to clean this up until it dries, because what's going to happen if you try to go clean that up, your cotton swab is just going to suck it out of the panel line, and then you're like, then you got to go back and do it again. So let it dry, and then go through and clean up. And as I'm going, as it settles in there, I'm going through, I, this is probably a little on the thin side. I mean, it's running really nicely, at least for my taste, but it looks like it's filling those in pretty good. There we go, just wanna get around that. And this little bead here, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little touch here. Okay, and then we can flip it over and do all these areas. So I like to use the pens 
Uh, I'm like against raised details because I can get a really sharp line, it's, and um, I just find it's a cleaner job. But this step right here is gonna anywhere where the masking off is just a hair off just a hair you know between like the silver details and stuff this is going to clean all that up and just start to really bring the details out crisp everything up a little bit So you don't have to be crazy clean with this, but you don't want to be just sloppy with it because then you just got a lot of cleanup, which means you're using a lot of thinner or whatever your cleanup material is to clean up uh, excess. So this kit comes with dry transfers. Um, I'm going to see what I have in my decal stash um, because if I can do decals, <laughs> It would save a lot of time. And I can correct it if I mess up. Okay, so there's that. So I'm going to have a little, another thing of lighter fluid over here to clean my brush with as I'm going between steps. Don't use paint thinner because then if you go back and put this on your uh, kit, you're going to melt your paint. So just use your enamel. So I'm just using some lighter, plain lighter fluid here. I can clean my brush a little bit. So use your lighter fluid or enamel thinner. Okay, so now for like around uh, this raised detail part here. This is a, uh, what size is this? This is a 0 0.1. <coughs> Since this is a bigger kit, I tend to use a slightly bigger um, indie ink pen. And it's real simple, I'm just gonna come around here and draw a line. Now this is crazy, crazy glossy. And sometimes the Indian, it's so shiny that the Indian ink doesn't wanna go onto the surface, so. So you just gotta kinda go back and forth until it starts to, there it goes, until the ink starts to flow. There's a little detail here, I'm gonna color that in. So the reason I can't use the Indian ink pens on the panel lines is because the panel lines are so deep and these have a little metal, you got the you got the tip of the, the pen and this this metal shaft. If I try to put the, the tip of the pen into the, the panel line, that metal shaft is gonna rub against the paint and scratch the crap out of it. Trust me, I know I've done it before and it's not fun. I'm like, why that? It's like, start scrap, scraping paint off left and right because you can't get the tip of the, the pen into the panel line. Like that. And then for, um, Oh, that brushes tore up. So for like an area here, I can come in here and just kind of Oh you know what I do have? I forgot. I do have um Indie ink. Ah, I forgot I had this. You yeah, guys just some black Indie ink. So here's just I forgot I had this. So this is Indie ink here, and I can use that also. The water base. So like for these bigger areas. this. Kind of paint it in. 
So these are a couple of ways you can do panel lines and things like that. So the random hair. It's just a cheap brush. Just like that. Now I don't have my optimizer on. I'll do my I'll use my optimizer when I do the rest because I need to be able to see. So now what you can do, <clears throat> I'm doing this kind of just a quick demo. So with the indie ink, you can go clean that up right away. Just wipe it off. Like so. Okay, so now this panel line has pretty much dried. Um, from just from my, when I did it last. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, just some clean, I put, no, I don't wanna do that too dirty. So I have like four cups going on, I just gotta keep them straight. <laughs> so you need some clean thinner or it's clean lighter fluid, whatever it is. I put it on my Q-tip like this and I take the excess off. You don't, you want very, very little on there. Okay. So very slightly uh, damp Q-tip. And then you want to wipe perpendicular to the panel line. Constantly rotating. Now these are, again, these are really deep, so I can probably come this way and it's not going to pull the ink out or the, the paint out. But the flat black enamel dries really, really quick. So, um, Again, I'm using these hobby Q-tips because it's not going to have random cotton going down into the panel line pulling out the, the wash. So once I'm done cleaning this up, and just keep turning your Q-tip. You're going to go through a ton of Q-tips because um, as it gets dirty, what happens, you just end up smearing the enamel wash over everything and you don't want to do that. And it'll be hard, it'll be really hard to tell that you're doing that, uh, <clears throat> especially on a red surface. And once I'm done with this one, I'll bring the other side skirt over and we'll show, we'll look at the difference between the two. So since this is so shiny, I can turn this in the light and I can see where, not necessarily by color, but, by, but the surface of the paint. If I see a spot that looks dull, that means there's a little bit of that enamel wash on the surface and I need to wipe that off. Um, you may not be able to see the color, but you can see the dullness. So that's one advantage of having such a shiny uh, gloss coat. So that's pretty much it for this. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna come back with my Optivisor with it here in a little bit and really scrutinize this. So that looks pretty good. Yeah, let's look at the other one compared to it. <coughs> okay. So on the left we have the panel line and on the right we don't. So. Pretty significant difference, it makes a big difference. And then uh, on the back side, we're gonna clean this up. And then I'm gonna use the ink, the pen. Towel in the panels. Okay, so that is You'll know you need to add a little more thinner to your Q-tip if you go to wipe clean up and nothing comes off. It dries out. The lighter fluid dries pretty quick. Kind of another reason why I like to use it. So if you're finding you have to rub really hard on something to get it off, get your 
thinner is dried out on your Q-tip. like this um, I find that if I, when I do it a wash when I go to clean it up I just tend to pull the wash out of that groove and uh, the pen is just a really accurate way to get a really clean line This is kind of those things where once I'm doing this off camera and I'm just kind of concentrating on it, I'll go a little quicker. I think you get the idea. So I'm going to do that to everything and then uh, we'll come back when I'm done with it. All right, continuing on from yesterday. So yesterday was panel lining. I, it took me all damn day. It took me exactly 10 hours to get them all done. I think we got it all done. So now we're moving on the dry transfers. Um, so these are dry transfers are, excuse me. Sorry, I had to cough. I'm, I've got a cough now. Um, Dry transfers are great because they're super thin and there's no chance of showing a raised edge like with a decal, even though when I do decals, by the time I flat coat everything, you can't see a raised edge. The downside with dry transfers is that you don't get to, there's no do overs. <laughs> if you screw it up, it's, it's trash. So the tools you're gonna need, you're gonna need some uh, clear scotch tape. You're gonna need some sort of burnishing tool. So I just, I just had it, I just made a stick. <laughs> Um, well, anyway, I'll make another one because I don't know what happens. So I'm just going to take a, a, um, my gosh, my brain is fried, uh, a skewer here. And I'm going to just kind of round off you don't want a really sharp edge because you will mess up your paint. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to sand off, um, it's going to round off the edge here. You 
You need something that's um, strong enough that you can put some pressure on. So I'm just going to round this off so it's not super pointy. Okay. Again, I'm going to show you like one or two and then I'll do the rest off camera because this is going to take me at least one day, if not two days. So some of these parts, so here are all the dry transfers here that come with the kit. Now, when you're doing it, it comes with a backing paper. Do not take the backing paper off. It's actually stapled on. Do not take that off because if, if you do, you're screwed. Um, these will start getting stuck to things and you need that backing paper to protect them. <clears throat> so what I do is I go kind of around one individual piece. I take a piece of tape, pick it up. With, I pick it up with the tape, place it in on the kit where it needs to go, and then I burnish it on. And you want to use clear masking tape. Don't use frosted because you can't see the text. So clear, clear uh, scotch tape, sorry, not masking tape, clear scotch tape so you can see the uh, dry transfer and where it's going on your piece. So um, let me find a good, maybe the skirt. So it's got a big one on there. Here we go. So we're just gonna do this skirt as an example. Try to come in and zoom in. Okay, so for this skirt, I'm gonna have to go back and I have to actually I'll have to bring my computer up here so I can look at Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna kind of I've got on my I'm wearing a shirt that's kinda of like a I'm gonna actually, I have a microfiber rag here I was using to just to make sure that the surface is clean. Kind of get any excess stuff off from me handling the parts yesterday from doing all the panel lines. But you can see here on the panel lines how nice and defined are they, they are now with the black in there, they look good. Okay, so again, I'm gonna show you one because I have to put my Optivisor on. So I'm gonna put on, uh, just looking at the reference here, it's going to be one of these guys right here. Okay. So let me kind of put that there. I need to get organized. Put that over there. Here. I don't have the best camera set up. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and just very carefully cut around the one I want to use. So I need my optimizer on. I gotta put, I gotta put this on because I do not want to. Where is my optimizer? Here it is. I do not want to mess up putting this. Now, you'll notice that. The transfer will, the, the white will actually change, not color, but shade. It's kind of hard to explain. Now these are really old, so I'm hoping these are, I'm hoping that like age doesn't affect these things. You know, sometimes old decals are hard to use. Pick it up. Okay, 
So there it is. Now, we very carefully place it into position on where you want it on the kit. So this guy goes <clears throat> Again, I'm gonna have to, I have to worry about what I'm doing and not if you can see what I'm doing. That's why I don't do the videos a lot because I sometimes I mess up in order to try to show what I'm doing rather than concentrate on what needs to be done. I wanna line the top of that four up with that panel line if I can. I've got it where it needs to be and you don't have to stick the tape down all the way around it so what I like to do is I like to start in a corner now you can see, I don't know if you can see it in camera but the white has changed a little bit it gets brighter as it back comes off of the its backing material you see there how it changes color and just work your way around the transfer I'm not pushing super hard. And once it's completely bright white, then you can pull the tape up. But it's important that you make sure you get it all down. So I'd start in a corner and I kind of work my way to the other corner. peel this up I don't just peel it all the way I start to I kind of peel it up in the corner and I make sure that's all this is it's all down in case I have to go back and see some of these letters didn't go down right here so I can put it back down and put pressure down again And this is why these take so fucking long. But if you've done it correctly, so you notice I haven't taken the tape all the way off. I wanna make sure all everything's down because if it isn't, I can still place it back in place without hurting it. And there you go. So that's how you do a dry transfer. <laughs> so I have to do that this many times on the kit. So it's a very slow, tedious process. It's a lot of just making sure you don't fuck the damn things up because they're they're fragile but in the end they're really really good and they're really they look great in the end so but yeah so i have to actually get my computer out and i need to look at photos of the one i did 12 years ago so i know the placement i can kind of guess just based on the photos that are the two photos that are sent to me that are in the kit but uh since i took a ton of photos of the kit i did 12 years ago that's a better reference so I'm just do that, and then uh, we'll see how far we get today on it. Okay, so one thing I've kind of feared um, is the age of these dry transfers. So <laughs> what's happening is as I'm cutting it away, as I'm cutting it away from the the field, the letters are getting released um, from the plastic as I cut. So for instance, this one, when I cut it out the M and the O came off the plastic. So I had to surgically replace it uh, 
back on to the plastic and try to line it up as best I could. So um, we're gonna keep going and hopefully, I don't run it, no, son of a bitch. <laughs> I just did a major, major boo-boo. Let's fucking lack it thinner. I thought I had, um, oh my gosh, I thought I had a um, lighter fluid on my Q-tip and it was lacquer thinner, so now I gotta touch up that paint. Anyway, so that's how today's going so far. Um, not so good so far. I had to have a little moment there. So now what I gotta do is after I seal all this, after I seal everything, I'll have to touch up this paint. It's not the end of the world, it's just fucking annoying that I did that. <laughs> Shit like that happens every once in a while. All right, so another thing about when you're doing these dry transfers, so you do not want to get, you don't want your tape to touch these once they're on because you'll lift it right off. So <laughs> for instance, there's a, I need a yellow arrow on top of this caution sign. So the way I did it, I, I took the tape right to the bottom edge of that triangle. So that way when I place this on here and try to center this the best I can, And that way this tape does not touch that caution sign. Right there. And then again, I'm gonna try to lift from a corner to see if it's down and it is just like that so these things man the, i have a hate love relationship i love the way they look but i hate doing them it's just so nerve-wracking <laughs> okay little tip uh that i've been doing is once i pick up the transfer on some tape i'll cut a straight edge uh just to help me give me to help with alignment so like the, the in this case the right edge i'm going to cut that a little bit straighter and that gives me a straight edge for alignment against a panel line or something this helps with aligning things and make sure, making, sure making sure things are as straight as possible. Alrighty, so it's Thursday and I managed to get all the dry transfers done yesterday. Um, for the most part, everything went pretty smooth. Um, again, they're kind of a hard pain to work with because you don't get a second chance on them. And I was running into, um, like I mentioned before, as I was cutting these, especially on the big ones, the letters were releasing so it's got this protective paper basically tissue paper but as i was cutting them you can see there's some letters they were releasing from the film onto the tissue paper so once that's happened it's trash you really can't use it um, with the exception of one or two i was actually kind of able to surgically put them back together because i needed to but so that was kind of frustrating but i thought it'd take me two days to get them done it took me just a little over eight hours so either i've gotten good at them or <laughs> something but here's an example of one they do look great especially once you seal them they look painted on i do have a couple touch-ups to do um where the they messed up like the little top of the m is missing on there so once everything is sealed everything i'll go in there with a little bit of white acrylic and just touch it up as best i can um i think i do that on the first one uh an, an interesting one is on the number five here on the thin funnel the ink was actually missing on the dry transfer before I even did anything to it. So these get a gloss coat. So I'm going to have to touch that up before I gloss it real carefully. So today's goal is to get everything sealed. Um, but these look, they look good. Um, and as I do this, I'll do one more inspection of the parts, make sure that if there's any panel lines, any cleaning up. I found a few little areas that I didn't quite clean up a hundred percent when doing the panel lines, but these will look really sharp, flat coated. I, I considered doing some pre-assembly, but then um, I decided not to, simply because when you start assembling things and you're spraying a flat coat, it's easy to get dry spray in nooks and crannies. And so um, I didn't want to deal with that. But these are looking good. Um, let's see, a really good one is, where are they? These guys. <sighs> So yeah, so for the flat coat, I'm gonna use all flat flat, which is kind of like 
Uh, it's a really good flat coat. I've used this in the past. Um, so all clad has a series of clear coats. It goes from clear to flat. I've used the matte before. Uh, I've got three bottles of this. I'm assuming it's going to take me about two bottles to do this whole thing. So we'll see. Um, but the, it's basically the same clear coat with the different levels of flattening agent. You can see I'm already shaking this one up, but you have to shake this really, really well. Make sure that that flat, that flat base is really incorporated well into here. You spray it on light, you spray it on wet, which is kind of nice. So you spray it on wet, it dries flat. So pretty low PSI, 15 to 20, let it dry for 10 minutes. You can handle it after an hour. So uh, I'm gonna get this mixed up. We'll get in the air, air booth, uh, the spray booth, and I'll show you spraying a few parts, and then the rest is just gonna be spraying today. Again, uh, I'm gonna try to do two coats, just so I have uh, a good layer of protection. Uh, so you put one coat down, let it dry for an hour, and then put another coat on, similar to the clear coat. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna be a day of spraying this. I have the lights too, so depending on what time I get done with this, I may bring out the lights on some whiteboard and kind of plan by wiring and stuff for that. Because I still have to paint the thrusters. So I haven't painted them yet because I haven't drilled the holes for the LEDs yet. And that's going to be a couple day process. Got the, I have to spray them, clear coat them, let them dry, and then do the polishing powder. So anyway, we'll be in the spray booth next. All right, so we're in the booth. I'm going to do a little bit off on camera with the fan off. And then I'm going to do the rest off camera with the fan on. Uh, so I mixed this up really good with my Vortex mixer. And then I've also cleaned up one of my stirring things here. And we're just going to really make sure this is incorporated really, really well. So we should have that mixed up nicely. Pour some airbrush. Put that to the side, put the lid on so it doesn't collect dust. And I've got the set. Right about there. And again, this is gonna get pretty pretty heavy pretty quick, so and I'm gonna blow each piece off as I go with some compressed air. And I'm gonna do one one other thing, I'll be right back. I have a Q-tip here with some lighter fluid on in case I see any panel lines that may be cleaned up. Like I missed a little bit right here. I'm going to clean that up real quick. That way as I go, I can, again, just double check, make sure everything looks as good as it can. And then I can just blow that off with some air and it'll dry right away. And one more thing we get. Just a uh, microfiber cloth here to kind of wipe anything off. Fingerprints, anything like that. And I gotta put that over here. And then get another glow. And then we're gonna spray some of this on there. to clean my airbrush. It just kind of clogged up on me a little bit. One second. All right, let's try this again. like one coat right there and they'll dry down nice and flat um so this is gonna look really good on the red as it dries down the shading is gonna really pop it's not going out quite as much as i thought it would i'm gonna check this over make sure i didn't miss anything so it's going to take a while because each part's going to get inspected. 
and I'm blowing off. Wipe each part. The microfibers will get off any fingerprints or anything, even though I've been wearing gloves. This stuff you want to spray pretty close to the surface. You can see I'm, I'm like right on top of it. You want this to go on wet. It's gonna hang in the air until I turn the air compressor on. Here's these little cover air things. cameras I got another piece so let's try one of these guys these armor pieces and this is not coming out the way I want it I'm at the Take a pause and see what's going on. Why this is not going on? What? All right, I gotta pause and figure something out. Okay, so I switched airbrushes and it seems to be going on better. So uh, this is my I wide and Neo. And again, I'm just gonna put it. Oh, I'm not sure you can see what I'm doing. Just put it on wet. I can lower my air pressure on this too. And you gotta move quick. You don't want a dry edge, especially with a flat coat. Just like that. So I'm gonna do the rest off camera and we'll come back after it's dry for a little bit and take a look. Okay, so I got all the flat coat spread and everything. Uh, it actually didn't take as long as I thought. So while it's drying, you can do some sub some pre-assembly, some parts. Uh, so these parts, I didn't flat coat, I just left these as is, um, and they look pretty good. So we're gonna just do some assembly, some assembly, some sub assembly while we can, some gluing some parts together. Uh, and I'm able to glue, so let me get, um, uh, I wish I had a, I don't have a, like a, what do you call it, a micro special applicator thing, so I just use some toothpicks. I use thick super glue anyway, so. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little super glue down here. And we're gonna start putting this part together. So I like to put the glue on, not the part that I'm putting on, meaning I don't wanna put the glue on this piece. I wanna put the glue on the piece I'm gluing to because if I put the glue, if I put the glue on the piece I'm gluing, <laughs> if I'm a little shaky with it, I can get glue where I don't want it. So you want to put the glue on the piece that you are gluing to. I'm gluing to this, so I put the glue on there. That's a pretty good fit, so it doesn't need a lot of glue anyway. After all the layers of paint and everything. They're side specific, so they only go on one side. 
Here's this part. I unmasked the um, chrome part in the middle. We'll get kind of a sense of what these colors look like together, finally. The, um, the red looks really, really good. It's been drying down now for a few hours and it's um, looking really sharp. So pretty happy with it. I found a few little spots where I need to touch up the red a little bit and just let the top coat dry. And we go touch it up with an airbrush and then recoat those parts again. These are not side specific. These can go on either side. Maybe. Okay. Set it down further. There we go. There we go. All right, there's that center part of the skirt, of the back skirt. Looks really good. Now, let me put a little glue on the back side here of this one. I got it. Now the red armor, I could technically, after an hour of it drying, I can handle it, but I'm gonna let it dry overnight. So then the rest of this gets put together. So I'm gonna work on doing some of this stuff. I'm gonna organize all the parts again. So it's constant battle of organization, but here's some, like here's the back of the skirts. Look really nice. So pretty happy with how things are turning out. Alrighty, so kind of uh, mat kitchen magic. <laughs> we got a lot done today. And this will probably be the end of this work in progress video because 90% of the painting's done. I still have to paint the bottom of the feet because again, I'm not sure. I have to drill that hole bigger for the power outlet. Got to paint the thrusters. Um, so not a whole lot of paintings left, but I was able to get most of the sub assembly done today that I can. So here's the shield, the shield's a wrap. And it looks freaking amazing. The back side. So all that masking. I've got a few little touch-ups here and there. It's like I had some glue ooze out in a few spots. I've got to go and kind of hit that with some flat. But uh, just looks, everything looks really, really good. But anytime I'm working on a kit, statue, or anything like this, man, I just the whole process. I'm kind of like stressing out about it because I don't know how it's gonna look. And until I start putting things together, then I'm kind of like I take a sigh, really like okay. Phew, is looking good because <laughs> you know when it's, in, when it's 300 pieces you have a vision in your head of what it should look like but until you start putting those pieces together it's really hard to see it sometimes but there's the shield uh, i'm going to show you some other stuff rear, rear skirt is done all that masking and scribing man it just really paid off everything looks really good here are the shoulders, armor, and I'll bring out the arms too. So now I'm not going to put the gun in the hand because when you put the gun in, it rubs against the, the arm here, um, but I'll show it to you. So here's the beam rifle. I keep it pretty simple on beam rifles because if you look at guns in general, they're pretty monotone, but I do like some chrome, some burnt iron, some uh, exhaust, ma exhaust manifold. So I think it looks pretty sharp. So here is, this is the uh, right arm. And here is the armor with all those dry, transfer, dry transfers I struggled with yesterday. Um, so they actually went on surprisingly much easier than I anticipated. I was really dreading working with them. In the end, they look fantastic, but they are fiddly and they're very fragile. You just have to go really slow and be very careful. Um, these just slide into the top like this. No pins or anything. They just slide in. Really positive contact and they're, they're not going to ever fall out. Here's the other side. Same thing, just a few, few little different markings. I got a little, little tiny touch up right there, a piece of dirt. <clears throat> the top coat has a spring today, which is a bummer. Not the end of the world, but there's always touch-ups. Um, so now this is all I've got together on the torso. I don't want to 
put this all together because it'll just rub paint and stuff. But here's uh, these pieces. Now these pieces are just, uh, take the backpack off for now. But these come off. These are magnetized, so these are one piece now. But the way it'll ship, it'll ship basically together, but this is like, so where all the wiring's gonna go, that goes together. That comes in there. That comes in there. And then the backpack goes on. And I'll show you the head too. The head's a little wonky, the way it works. So here's the head. You can't open this part, but I'd suggest to my client just leave it closed. It's super fiddly. This hinge in there is a, is a dumb design. I don't like it. Uh, and there's, there's a little bit of detail in there, but it's not worth, to me, it's not worth rubbing and scratching paint to show it off. Here's a quite a bit of detail in her here, but you actually can't even see it once it's together. Um, but it's there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna glue this part on like this and keep the head separate for shipping. That way I can protect it really well because if I ship this thing with the head on there and just the fin and everything, it's all gonna break. I mean, there's really no way to ship that. Well, I, the, the engineering is a little wonky on this part. Like there's no, I wish there was a key on the back side of the head for this part. It's just kind of a weird loosey goosey fit. Um, Cause I can still access where the LED goes in. Um, but it just, like, I would never glue this in place because I, I, I wouldn't know if I got in the right spot. Can't remember if I did that on the first one I did. I, I, I think I did. I think the, the head was permanent. I can't, I don't think the head came off. But so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this on. Again, I have to keep in mind that this thing is getting lit. And in the back of my head, I've gotta, I gotta say, okay, what happens if something goes out or, you know, down the road in the future? And then the head will just go in like that and it'll just slide right on. That looks really freaking sharp, man. Tons of work, guys. This is Thursday of week six on this guy. I, I, in my head, I had six weeks estimated. If we weren't lighting it, I'd be done. I could have finished up today if I really pushed it, and definitely tomorrow. So, you know, it's two. I, I estimated 250 hours of the work. I'll, I'm right, tomorrow I'll be at 240. Here are the um, armors for the chest. Again, these kind of all just nestle together. Again, I brought all the details under there and under here. So if you open this up, you can see that. That gets mag that just holds it closed when it's on the chest magnetized. And that gets nestled in like that. Uh, what else? The fin funnels are over there. I'm not gonna show them to you, but they're pretty much done. Funnel racks, got some touch-ups on these just from assembly. Got some shiny spots here and there from the glue. But uh, they do open up, but I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't open them up because I mean I wouldn't close them because when you open and close them, they do rub. Uh, I got some shiny spots up here to take care of from uh, again gluing and assembly. But um, yeah, they look dumb closed, and they don't really close up well anyway. Even when I was doing pre-assembly and prepping, I, I was heating these up and and working with them, and they just don't line up. They don't. They look stupid closed. You want to see all the detail in there, so leave them open. You see all the, the steel and the aluminum I put in those uh, recesses, really nice. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, front skirts turned out really good. There we go. And the back side, those details. And what else? Uh, here are the, I guess these like the shin armors. These will ship separately, they're magnetized, so those will just Magnetize on in the end. Those look great. Uh, the feet. So these are glued together right now. These look sharp. My work area is a complete disaster. I need to spend a day cleaning up. Here are the heels. And then I think the last thing to show you, oh, the fuel tanks turned out really nice. Here's one of them. Shading looks great. Uh, a little different than the first one I did, I brought these little panels with some steel. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing as I did on the first one I did 12 years ago. Uh, here's one of the legs. 
We got the matte red with the matte steel, some shiny blue and shiny chrome just to give it a little pop. I think I hit that with some flat. I didn't get that, no big deal. So this will get all assembled later, but I got to do a wiring. Um, da, 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 da. I showed you the shield. And the last thing I'll show, you, I'll show you some of the cap armors. Here, there's one of the calf armors. This is for the right side. So these aren't gonna, get, I, I'm debating whether I should glue these on or not. Um, again, I'm just, in my head, I'm thinking if we ever gotta take this thing apart in the future. I haven't, I should put these on since I flat coated this. I think they'll pressure for it pretty good. Okay, I don't want to force it because I don't want to, it's going to rub paint for sure. <laughs> it's a tight fit. Um, so I got to decide if I'm going to glue those on or not. I don't know. But there you go. So that's the end of this work in progress. Uh, next one will be working on, I'll figure out the wiring, the lighting and all that stuff. I got to burn the LEDs in for a day or two. So I'm assuming I'll probably put in half a day tomorrow, just do my touch ups, figure out the wiring and let the LEDs burn in, you know, at least through Saturday, maybe Sunday, make sure nothing goes out. And then uh, we'll pick up with lighting. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.